You know, I really miss going to the bar. I miss going down to the pub, having a few drinks with my friends, discovering new cocktails, new cocktail combinations, all the amazing food that you get, and the most important part of that aspect, just hanging out, getting some good quality social time. Well, nobody's going to the bar right now because of COVID. Quite a few people actually don't even drink. But even if you can't get a drink or you don't drink, you can still appreciate a nice boozy note in a fragrance. I have a ton of boozy fragrances in my collection. I gathered up my top seven. I'm gonna show them to you today. Stick around. Hey, what's cracking YouTube? I'm Brandon. Welcome to Da Vinci's Alchemist, your blue collar guide to drinking well, stinking pretty. Today we're gonna to talk about boozy fragrances. One of my favorite notes in the world of perfumery, or rather accords in the world of perfumery, is that kind of like that boozy feel. Now that can cover a lot of ground, anywhere from you know a whiskey vibe, a rum vibe, even a gin vibe. It can be anywhere from sweet, to dry, to woody. Boozy notes in fragrance, to me, they're pretty damn amazing. Now, like I said before, I have a ton of boozy fragrances in my collection. These seven that I'm bringing to your attention, they're, you know, they're the ones that for me right now are like the cream of the crop. During this time of year, the colder winter months especially, these ones really stand out. I did not put them in any order or you know list of preference or anything like that. I'm just gonna kind of throw them at you. And I do have uh, one sort of honorable mention only because I have like an unlabeled decant bottle of it. So without further ado, let's get this party started. Cheers. So like I said, this first honorable mention, uh, Breaking it all the way back to 1955, the brand is Luban and the fragrance is Gin Fizz. As I said, I only have this small um, travel decant sprayer. It's not even labeled, but I did buy this directly from my local uh, retail store, Fumery, in Portland. Now, Gin Fizz is a really, really, uh, it's a really great and apt name for this fragrance. It has those elements, that green juniper, that nice little citrus kick, to me, it comes off as very bubbly um, and poppy, especially in the very beginning. Dries down with some nice little musks. Definitely a little bit more appropriate for like the summer or springtime. For when I am wanting to feel a little less stuck into the winter, this is really great. Again, Gin Fizz from Luban. So into this list proper, we're gonna start off with um, Patch Flash from Towerville. Now Towerville was a line that uh, perfumer and brand creator Andy Tower uh, he started it, it's kind of like, um, it's, it's like basically taking a little bit more accessible fragrances and bringing them to market as opposed to his, you know, very complex uh, compositions like L'Air du Desert Marocaine, Incense Rosé, Lone Star, I think is the name of it, like those ones. Now Patch Flash was one of my very first reviews. I will post that up here. Um, you don't have to go look at it if you don't want to because it was very early on in my YouTube career. Now. Patch Flash, I, it's, yeah, it's nice. It's still, to this day, I really, really love this. It has this very green, grassy feel, slightly kind of woody, sticky, sweet, almost kind of a honey vibe. That patchouli that's in this, man, and, and just in case you didn't realize what the patch stood for, patch is patchouli, patch flash. Anyway, point being, this has a nice, boozy, woody, syrupy makeup to it. Relatively linear on me, lasts a decent amount of time. I really like the uh, the Towerville line from Andy Tower. You get them in these nice little 30 mil bottles. You can add some really amazing and interesting fragrances to your collection without having to stack up a whole huge giant amount of liquid. First official on the list, Patch Flash from Andy Tower, Towerville. Earlier this year, coming out onto the scene was a company called Sense of Wood. Now, they created this kind of subscription service. You sign up, you get sent a, uh, a smaller bottle as well as a candle, like a corresponding candle. You can then, once you're finished, if you want, buy the big uh, 75 milliliter, which by the way, go check out their website. Their 75 milliliter bottles are beautiful. As a matter of fact, I will post a photo somewhere. I'll stop waffling. This one is plum in cognac. It is gorgeous. Of course it has that cognac note 
fruity, a little, not super sweet, a little dry, has this, uh, this tobacco vibe. It comes off with this kind of rum-soaked punch note. You definitely pick up the woods in this. This is reminiscent, for me anyway, of uh, having a nice glass of really delicious aged rum, sitting on the porch, smoking a pipe. Really great deal that they did with their monthly uh, subscription service because you get a new one constantly, but I digress. This one, Plum and Cognac, it is definitely one of my favorite deeper, darker, winter, boozy tobacco fragrances for this year. Sense of Wood, again, Plum in Cognac. Coming up next is a Bad Boy Frag. I'm sure a lot of you uh, have already heard about it. I did a, a review of this a while back. You can check that out over here. That is Dark Rebel from John Vervados. This is such a kick-ass frag, guys. Leathery tobacco, wood, all coalescing with that intense rum vibe. I feel like when I wear this, I should probably have a pair of sunglasses on because this shit is awesome. It is bad boy fragrance, bad girl fragrance. In case I didn't mention it, I feel like every single one of these on this list is definitely unisex. Back to Dark Rebel, when you get this on you, you get a certain sense of confidence. Or maybe that's just me, I don't know. Not so easy to find right now on discounters. I know that for a while this was all over the place. You could even find it in like a Ross or a TJ Maxx or TK Maxx if you're in the UK. Get your paws on this if you have not already or at least try to find yourselves a sample to see if you dig it. I don't think you'll be let down by it. Dark Rebel, John Vervados. <clears throat> well, we're officially about halfway there. What kind of host would I be if I didn't do a whiskey break? You guys didn't really think I wasn't going to do whiskey break, did you? Shame on you. So admit it, when you think about Lalique, you typically think about Ancre Noir or Ancre Noir à l'extrême. That seems to be the one that everybody talks about from the House of Lalique. However, I haven't heard, I don't think anybody talk about this. Maybe one reviewer has talked about it. This next one on my list is from Lalique. This is Ombre Noir. Signature, thick, beautiful glass bottle, nice knurled wooden cap, cinnamon, nice resinous amber, little bit of a green note in the opening, nothing weird or uh, overpowering, just enough to kind of give it a little bit of a, of like some zazz, some, some interesting little top notes. Cedar, cognac, bourbon-y sort of vibe. This is definitely one of my top, top boozy fragrances. The slightest bit of like a wet tobacco. It's just beautiful. The color really matches the, uh, the juice inside as, in terms of how you would perceive a boozy fragrance to smell like. I got it for a decent price. Not sure what it's going for these days, but uh, man, this thing is a banger. This is a kick-ass fragrance. Absolutely nothing like Ancre Noir or Ancre Noir à l'extrême. This is a gorgeous beauty. Ombre Noir from La Ligue. Coming right down the hype train pipe is Angel Share from By Killian. I recently did a full review, which you can check out up there, so I will not bore you with extreme details. I also did a cocktail recipe for this, so go check it out. Honey, orange zest, cognac, Irish whiskey sort of vibe. Kind of sticky, kind of sweet, real sexy. Angel Share is bitchin'. Comes in this really gorgeous little bottle. Definitely the priciest fragrance in this list, but awesome nonetheless. A lot of people really love this. Get you a sample and check it out first. Angel Share from By Killian. Coming down to the last two fragrances in this list, you guys. This next one is, oh man, I mean, it's gorgeous. This is Barawanda from Nazamato. I first came across this when I was in a Barney's uh, down in Las Vegas. I was blown away by how someone could get so close to the smell of, you know, of an actual whiskey barrel. And th this is amazing. This is crazy. If you haven't tried it before, you've got to get your nose on it. It's, uh, it's honey. It's dry oak barrel. It's more of a rye whiskey than like a bourbon or, you know, uh, like a barley style whiskey. It has a, a certain like a dryness to it that I really, really love. There's a good amount of vanilla sweetness in this, nothing too overpowering or overcloying. And the cap for this being cork is super fitting because there is this textural essence of cork 
in this fragrance. Not sure how in the hell he did it, but he did it. I personally don't think that you could get away with wearing this in an office situation because it's gonna smell like you've been drinking booze, but in the most sexiest way. And honestly, for me, this on a woman is like crack. You combine two things that I love, the ladies and the whiskey, forget about it, I'm gonna follow you around like a puppy. This will definitely always belong on my top boozy fragrances, hands down, Barawanda from Nazamato. Coming up on the last fragrance, guys, thanks so much for sticking around. I do wanna make a slight disclaimer, even though it's the end of the video, that all of these fragrances that I have brought to your attention today I know they're all boozy honestly none of them smell the same they they all have very different appeal to them they have different aspects that I love I, I cannot stress enough that these are sexy boozy fragrances and they all are just they're bangers they're great they're amazing that being said there's no way in hell I could do a list about boozy fragrances if I didn't include bourbon from Hendley. So now I have two. There's there's two different uh, concentrations. There is the EDC, the Eau de Cologne, which is uh, this little bottle here. And then there's also the x -Trait, which is this smaller travel bottle here. They both have that vanillic, bourbony, oaky, spicy, kind of slightly honeyed, resinous feel. The different concentrations definitely have different aspects to them as well. The x is definitely deeper, a little more soulful, a little more complex, doesn't pop off the skin nearly as well as the Eau de Cologne, but it does tend to last a little bit longer. Now the Eau de Cologne has a vibrance to it. Where the x is, like I said, it's more deep and soulful, the, uh, the Eau de Cologne is kind of playful. To me, it has kind of that, that orange zest vibe. If I were to kind of put them into a comparison, I would say the Eau de Cologne is like an old-fashioned cocktail, using bourbon, of course, and uh, the x is more like an actual glass of bourbon neat. They both kind of have different parts to play, but I wanted to bring them both in for this final fragrance. Probably could have extended it to an extra, but that seems kind of pointless. I know that you can definitely get samples of either of these uh, concentrations from the Henley website. I definitely want to steer you in that direction and check these out if you are into boozy fragrances because honestly, out of all of my boozy fragrances, excuse me, I would say that this is actually probably my number one. Incredible imagination on Mr. Hans Henley and he, his execution on this is spot on, top notch. That is bourbon and bourbon from Henley Perfumes. Whew, well, we talked an awful lot about booze and uh, you know what? I enjoyed the hell out of it. I hope that you guys like this video. I hope that I've introduced you to some new boozy fragrances that you may not have uh, heard about or known about previously. I want to thank all of my repeat viewers and my subscribers. I love you guys and cheers. I also want to thank all of the new viewers that stuck around. Cheers to you as well. If you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Do not forget to hit your thumbs up for the like. Hit the thumbs down for the dislike. I can't appeal to everybody. And don't forget to mash the shit, kill the shit out of that notification bell so that you know when I drop future videos. I would love to hear back from you guys down in the comments section. Let me know if there's some other boozy fragrances that aren't on this list that you guys would recommend. Or if you tried any of these, let me know what you think. And you know, even though the bars aren't open at any time soon, but that doesn't mean that we can't enjoy the hell out of these boozy fragrances. So I hope that you guys get to enjoy some boozy fragrances. I hope that you're taking care of yourselves and each other. And remember, no matter what you're doing, no matter where you're going, no matter what you're sipping, don't forget, keep calm, stink pretty, and I will see you guys in the next one. Definitely the priciest uh, fragrance in, well that squeaked.